This is The Beam from Unity. Safe, convenient, instantly aimable light. The Beam is designed for easy installation on a wide variety of vehicles. The post along the driver's side of the windshield is the most common mounting location for passenger cars, pickups, and vans. Trucks, farm equipment, emergency vehicles, and some cars may require mounting in other locations as specified in the catalog. The catalog also lists cars by make and model, and the appropriate mounting location, bracket installation kit, and spotlight model number for your vehicle. Before you begin, double check to make sure you have the right parts for your installation. The spotlight consists of the light, shaft, and handle. The installation kit contains the bracket, screws, the drill bushing, template, and inside trim pieces. A gasket might also be included. Read all the directions before beginning, paying particular attention to any special notices on the template that may pertain to your vehicle. The template sheet lists all the part numbers you'll be using. Another double check before you begin. These are the tools you'll need. Scissors, masking tape, electrical tape, flashlight, hammer, center punch, 3 8 inch socket wrench, Phillips and standard screwdrivers, needle nose pliers, and a test light. To drill the holes, you'll need a drill, line level, and three drill bits, 1 8 5 16 and 1 half inch. For the half inch hole, a slow speed, heavy duty drill is recommended. The first step is to cut out the bracket template and position it on the vehicle using masking tape to protect the car's finish. Check the bracket against the template to be sure it fits the contour of the vehicle and matches the marks for the bracket holes. If the bracket does not fit, do not proceed. Contact your Unity distributor or Unity for more information. Using a center punch and hammer, spot the holes on the template. Then remove it and drill the 1 8 inch holes that will be used to attach the bracket to the post. A high speed drill can be used. Inside the vehicle, remove the trim along the post. It will either snap off or can be unscrewed. Check for any wires, then replace the trim. Attach the bracket and the gasket if required onto the vehicle, making sure it's screwed on tight. Insert the drill bushing into the bracket and screw it tight as well. You are now ready to drill the large half inch hole through the post. Using a line level with the vehicle on a level surface, be sure that the drill is level and in proper alignment. Carefully drill through the outer surface of the vehicle, letting the drill do the cutting without forcing the bit. For this step, a slow speed drill is recommended. Because you're drilling at an angle, a high speed drill can tend to wander. The hole may not come out straight and level, which is essential for proper installation. Don't rush this step. Drilling may take up to 10 minutes. From time to time, check the mounting screws, making sure they're tight and have not been loosened by vibration. After drilling through the outer surface, use a flashlight to be sure there are no wires visible in the drill's path. If there are any wires, push them aside and out of the path of the drill. If the hole is clear, check your level again and complete the hole drilling all the way through the windshield post and the interior trim. The bushing will be hot. Carefully remove it using pliers. Now you're ready to install the spotlight. First, tighten the head housing clamping screw. The handle assembly must be removed to get the shaft through the hole. Loosen the handle assembly wedge screw, 
although the wedge does not need to be removed. With the handle off, be sure the interior tubing is set correctly within the chrome housing. It's very important that the middle tube extends at least one inch beyond the end of the chrome tubing. If there is less than one inch, the spring-loaded electrical contact in the handle switch will not function properly, and the spotlight will not light. Now, gently insert the shaft through the bracket, being careful not to disturb the contact on the inner rod. Rotate the split bushing at the base of the chrome tubing until it lines up with the split in the bracket. The split sleeve will seat itself in the bracket as you push the shaft through. Some brackets have a set screw and no split in the bracket. In this case, the split in the bushing should be set 90 degrees from the set screw. Back inside the car, assemble the inside bracket. Install the rubber grommet with the angle toward the trim, then the wire clip, then the collar. Check again to be sure there is one inch between the chrome tube and the middle tube. Next, install the handle. Match the notch in the chrome tube and the slot on the inner tube with the key in the gear and the key in the handle. All must be aligned for the light to function properly with good electrical connections. Remove the wedge and screw and slide the handle assembly on gently so as not to disturb the contact on the shaft. Turn the plastic handle until the key on the gear aligns with the smaller shaft slot. Then rotate the entire handle assembly so that the key within the handle matches the slot in the tubing. Snug up the wedge and screw using the socket wrench, but do not tighten them completely. Here's how a spotlight is usually set to rotate when assembly is completed. 360 degrees horizontally, and either 90 or 120 degrees vertically. You can adjust the arc to meet your own needs. For safety, never set the handle so that it will rotate above a horizontal plane. The handle must have proper clearance from the dashboard and from the side window and or door. To set the handle stop, rotate the handle about the shaft in a clockwise direction until the stop can be felt. Then continue to move so that the outer shaft will rotate until the handle is in an upward position. Slowly rotate the handle in the opposite direction until the stop can be felt. Carefully continue rotating the handle so the stop is moved and the outer shaft is rotated back so that a desired clearance is obtained between the handle and the dashboard. Tighten the bracket clamping screw outside the vehicle. To set the head clearance, slightly loosen the head housing clamp screw about a quarter turn so there is a slight drag. With the handle against the stop in a counterclockwise direction, the light beam should be in a slight skyward position. Confirm clearance by checking that the door opens without hitting the light. Tighten the wedge screw. Move the handle against the stop in the clockwise direction. There should be clearance between the head of the light and the windshield or body of the vehicle. Once again, test the rotation of the light, up and down and around. Check for proper clearance from the door, windshield, and the side of the vehicle. If there is any interference, loosen the wedge screw and readjust the light and handle accordingly. After making all your adjustments, completely tighten the wedge and screw. And the outside bracket clamping screw. The last step is to complete the electrical connection. First, stretch out the wire. Next, push the rubber bushing up against the trim. Push the clip in, and then the collar. With a small standard screwdriver, tighten the set screw. Give it a slight push and then tighten it completely. Place the wire in the clip and using the needle nose pliers, gently bend the clip to hold the wire, taking care not to damage the insulation on the wire. 
Since dashboards vary in design, use your best judgment when wiring into the car's electrical system. You may want to drill a 5 16 inch hole in the body near the inside bracket for the lead wire grommet. Or the wire may be threaded through at the edge of the crash pad. The location of the fuse panel also varies. It's best to wire the spotlight directly to a fusible link. A test light is helpful when making connections. When wiring is complete, it should be secured with electrical tape. Finally, test the light by turning the light on. Rotate it up and down and around, making sure it doesn't blink or flash. It's easy to make adjustments after installation. The head housing clamping screw controls the vertical adjustment, while the set screw at the top of the housing controls the horizontal tension. Be sure not to over tighten, which can force the handle to slip. The tension should be sufficient to hold the position of the spotlight in the wind at highway speeds. All of the installation steps are described and illustrated in the instructions that come with the bracket kit. Take a few moments to review them, and then you'll be ready to see for yourself how easy it is to install your new spotlight from Unity Manufacturing.